Hi there. During this session, I'm going to be talking about potential dividers. Now, these are electrical devices which, I guess if I define them properly, are in place to be able to control a fraction of the available voltage. Okay. So if there's a general supply, what do we have is a simple circuit set up, which means we can uh, um, use just a certain amount depending on the needs. These look a little bit like this. So what we see is that VS stands for voltage supply. And what we have in my first example on the left with a fixed resistance, I have resistance 2 and resistance 1. And the voltage across resistance 2 is a value I can work out. And the voltage across resistance 1, um, which I can extract from the circuit and use in some way, is uh, V1 or V out. So that's if I want a fixed value. And if I want to alter this in some way, if I change the ratio of resistances. So here, if I have a variable resistor, that means I can change the R2 and R1. And that means that I can control the V out. So let me take you through, the, I guess, the thinking to solve that uh, problem. So the fixed resistance circuit has a series circuit there for the current running through the supply resistor 1 and resistance 2 is always going to be the same. So with this um, bit of knowledge I can then use that fact to work out that I know that current 1 is going to run through R1, current 2 is going to run through resistance 2 and then I can apply a little bit of Ohm's law. So using Ohm's law I can work out that as the current is saying through each of these resistors, that means that current equals the voltage supply over the resistance total, and voltage 1 equals over R1, and that equals voltage 2 over R2. With these three ratios, I can kind of extract a few sets of rules which are quite useful. Now, we've got to remember here that that RT, sorry there, that RT is resistance total in the circuit. So that can be shown as R1 plus R2. So if I take the first two ratios, I can see that voltage 1 equals resistance 1 divided by resistance 2 times the voltage supply. Or voltage 1 equals resistance 1 divided by resistance 1 plus resistance 2 multiplied by the voltage supply. Um, as well as that, we must always remember that the voltage uh, 1 divided by voltage 2 is equal to resistance 1 divided by resistance 2. So there's a couple of ratios there that I can use. So with this as a known fact in that this type of circuit, it means I can do some calculations about it. Um, with potential dividers, they're always going to be looking like a little bit like this of some sort. And so the big thing to remember is that final key formula. Now you have to remember this. This is not provided by the DP in any way. So just remember the voltage out is going to be equal to the voltage supplied multiplied by the ratio of R1 divided by the ratio or divided by the sum of R1 and R2. Um, this R1 is so the DP don't give you a value or um, a formula sheet. R1 just fits in with the statement towards um, the diagram that I have above. There are lots of books which may have R1 and R2 um, switched around, so you have to be quite careful about thinking about the important resistance which goes on top is the resistance of which the voltage out should, the voltage out is measured across. So, with that in mind, let's try some problems. Calculate the output PD, so the V out from the potential divider circuit shown below. We know R1, we know R2, and we know the voltage supply. So that means it's a question of bringing out the formula and working out the unknown. And we'll stop for a moment, give you a chance to calculate that. And now you've had the chance to do that. Hopefully you worked out that the V out is going to be 8 volts. Okay. So 
this is quite a useful tool to be able to control uh, the voltage out. Um, for instance, if I had a variable resistor um, in place covering R2 and R1, it means I could change the amount of voltage. For instance, I could probably change the, uh, the volume on a speaker system, the amount of voltage which is going out on that system. Now, it's when I start to use other sensors and integrate it into those systems that becomes an even more powerful tool. A couple of sensors I'm going to talk about here. Uh, a thermistor, so this is a device which um, usually decreases in resistance with increasing temperature. Okay, So it's basically something which responds as changes resistance with temperature. And that's the symbol for a thermistor, and that's the symbol used by the DP. And I've also got a, a light-dependent resistor, or sometimes known as a photoresistor, and this will decrease in resistance with increasing light intensity. So light decreases its resistance. That's one you've got to really try and remember because it's quite easy to, um, to get those the wrong way around and make mistakes when you're doing calculations. And the symbol used by the IB Diploma Physics course is going to be two arrows going onto a simple resistor. You sometimes see a, uh, a circle around the resistor with two arrows going onto it. You may see that in some books. But this is what we're going to use in the diploma program. Now, with these sensors integrated, we can do some interesting things. Here's a practical application we can talk it through. So this is a potential divider that uses uh, to control light activated switches. So here what I've got is I've got a variable resistor and I've got a light dependent resistor, as we can see. Now with these in place, it means the amount of light is going to have an impact on the voltage out. Let's see. Again, I'm going to pause for a moment. Press the pause button. See if you can work out the solutions to these sentences. Okay. Hopefully you've got some answers now, so I'll read it through. When the light intensity of the LDR decreases, its resistance will increase. This causes V out to decrease, so the processor and the output will probably turn off. The variable resistor can be adjusted to change the sensitivity of the whole device. So you're still in some control of the device. So there's a practical application. I'll leave you with one last question example, and this is more numerical. So with this circuit which is shown here, you're asked to calculate the readings when the meters shown below when the thermistor has a resistance of 1 kilo ohm in warm conditions and 16 kilo ohms in cold conditions. Now see we're looking for a current reading and a voltage reading. So I'm going to give you a moment just to again press pause and go through and see if you can solve this. For the current Obviously, you're going to find out what the total resistance is and then use Ohm's law to work out the current flowing is going to be 0 0.001 amps. Um, the voltage, well, in this case, I can work out the voltage V, and if I know the resistance, um, I can do current times the resistance, and that equals 4 volts. Um, in the second situation, again, I'm doing similar set of things, but in this case, the total resistance is 20 kilo ohms, and therefore, I've got an output voltage of just one volt. So there's some examples of how we can use potential dividers. Thank you very much.